This episode brought to you by How to Write Manga, your complete guide to the secrets of Japanese comic book storytelling. Available wherever fine ebooks are sold. The world has gone insane. Cosplayers rule the conventions, gamers dominate the tabletop, and the internet. Sci fi subjugates the movies. And fantasy rules the bookstore with an iron fist. Only one group can bring order to this unruly mob. A team of uber geeks, masters of the nerdly arts, trained for decades in the hobby shops and basements of the nation. Mobilized by the secret masters, they are the Department of Nerdly Affairs. Hello, operatives, and welcome to the Department of Nerdly Affairs. I'm your host, Rob Patterson, here with my co-host, Don Chisholm. Oh, man, what day is it? Uh, Smatter Day. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. And tonight, we're going to be talking about Taiwanese comic books. And to delve into this fascinating subject, we've enlisted an expert, Julia Chen, who's going to help us today. Julia is an electronic music artist, a freelance writer, and translator from Taipei. Welcome to the show, Julia. Yeah, hello. Thanks for having me. No, thanks for coming on. <laughs> Julia recently wrote an article for uh, the News Lens, which is an Asian online news magazine called Tales of Taiwan's <clears throat> Comic Artists, Persecution, Isolation, and Endless Talent. And after reading this article, I knew that I had to have her on the show to talk about the depth and incredible variety of Taiwanese comic books. But before we do that, why don't we talk a little bit about you, Julia? How did you first get interested in Taiwanese comic books? Did you grow up reading them? Well, we had uh, some comic books uh, lying around in the house. Um, it was kind of strange because uh, all the Taiwanese comic books that I read were my parents. Mm -hmm. And when I uh, went to school here in Taiwan, uh, other kids were reading uh, Japanese manga, and there, there were like virtually no Taiwanese comics. So it was strange. And uh, mm -hmm. the reason that uh, I wrote this article was because uh, it was an assignment that uh, my editor, uh, David Green, gave me. He told me to mm -hmm. uh, cover a, a comic festival in Taipei. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so uh, I went and, uh, um, how to say, it wasn't that impressive. And when I uh, uh, scored the internet because I wanted some uh, background information, I also realized that um, there weren't a lot of uh, uh, English uh, information about Taiwanese comics. So I decided uh, not to cover on the comic festival itself, but to write a a more comprehensive uh, article on the uh, Taiwanese comics and uh, especially its history. So uh, maybe I could uh, link it under Wikipedia <laughs> for anyone interested. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. <laughs> now, as you said, when you were growing up, there were Taiwanese comic books around the house. Mm -hmm. um, did you actually read them yourself or were you more interested in the Japanese stuff when you were young also? Hmm. I was also interested in the Japanese stuff, but I mean, there's no re no real conflict of interest because uh, I was young and I liked it. I liked comic book books. <laughs> um, can I ask roughly what age you are, just so that our audience knows what time period we're talking about? Oh, I'm thirty. Yeah, I was born in 1987. That was the time when, you know, the martial law period in Taiwan was uh, officially uh, ended. Right. Mm -hmm. Actually, I should probably bring our audience up to speed on that. Um, mm -hmm. Very quickly, just to give a quick background for our audience. Um, in Taiwan, um, mm -hmm. after the end of World War II, there was a uh, civil war going on in China. And uh, between two groups of uh, the Communist Party of China and a group called the KMT. And after World War II, the Communist Party won, as anyone who knows about China would know. But the KMT fled and they fled to Taiwan. The leadership of the KMT, uh, led by a man named uh, Chiang Kai-shek, uh, went to Taiwan with, a, with what was left of their army 
took over Taiwan, declared it the only real China, and then proceeded to declare martial law and uh, turn the island into a fortified camp. And uh, they inflicted strict martial law on the local population and kept them under control until the 1980s, when um, democracy uh, was finally restored in Taiwan. So for a good part of Taiwan's history during the 20th century, it was under martial law. And this will become relevant to our discussion because producing comic books under a martial law state and producing comic books under democracy are a little bit different from each other. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure that our listeners were um, up to speed on things because, of course, mm -hmm. that's going to be relevant during to our discussion. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. Okay, so um, Don, did you have something you want to say before we went on? Uh, no, not just yet. Um, one of the things I think... Uh, and it's hard to explain in a, in a podcast without visuals. I don't think people here, like uh, here in North America, were pretty familiar with uh, Japanese comics because mm -hmm. that was a big thing starting in the 90s. Yeah. And, and I don't think people realize that, say, uh, Japan, Taiwan, China, uh, Hong Kong, they all have their own comics and they're actually very different from each other. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm just hoping while we're, we're getting into the discussion, people keep that in mind that the, that when we talk about uh, Taiwanese comics, they're not like Japanese comics. Well, actually, uh, no, I, I wouldn't make that distinction because I mean, Hong Kong comics, they are quite, they have their own distinct style, but Taiwan is mm -hmm. uh, a, a little bit in the mix. Like, uh, they're mm -hmm. also like, uh, a lot of uh, Taiwanese comics that uh, stylistically are very similar to uh, Japanese uh, comics, especially since uh, our market here, like uh, ninety percent, is uh, saturated by uh, Japanese manga, and everybody grew up reading Japanese manga. Right. Yeah, yeah. But if you, mm -hmm. if you go back to the to the sixties, though, there was, um, and mm -hmm. you you probably know better than me, but the. The ones I've seen from the '60s from Taiwan, mm -hmm. they have they they don't look they don't look like the, the the Japanese tend to do things that are a little more abstract. Mm -hmm. And I've seen um, a lot of older Taiwanese ones mm -hmm. before before the uh, before the crackdown. They were either very like like cartoony and comicy, mm -hmm. or they had this style that North America would refer to as magazine style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the art was, it was very detailed. Mm -hmm. It was very, very solid. And it tended more towards, if if not exactly mm -hmm. realism, something that felt more like realism than, say, uh, uh, Japanese comics, especially from, like, that era back in the 60s and that. Well, it depends, I think. For example, uh, I feel yeah. like, a, like Japanese comic uh, during the 60s, the style is also quite uh, different from what manga is right now. So yeah. I feel like I think it's just the uh, the the age <laughs> the age difference. Okay. But before K the KMT t took over Taiwan, uh, Taiwan was uh, ruled by Japan, and right. like the actually the first comic in uh, Taiwan was uh, produced by a uh, Japanese. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but like that that comic was the. Uh, uh, it was by this uh, Japanese artist called uh, Kuni Kunishima Suiba, and like uh, he drew one comic every year uh, during uh, about Taiwan. What happened in Taiwan during the Japanese colonial era? Like he drew it on silk, and mm -hmm. it was dated from eighteen seventy five to nineteen forty five. So that's like fifty comics. Wow. Yeah. He's drawing them on silk. Now, how long were these comics? Uh, how to say? It's, it was kind of like uh, the political cartoons that you see on newspaper. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was like uh, what happened in Taiwan during that time. Okay. And it's huh. kind of like an integrative... Uh, he kind of integrated like uh, everything into like uh, one scenery. Okay, so it's a single panel comic. Yeah, yeah. It's a single panel comic. Oh, interesting. Huh. Okay, well, that's that's a great lead-in to uh, start starting to talk about the actual history of Taiwanese comic books. Then, uh -huh. all right. So, so the original comic books. I probably should have gone back a little farther and mentioned that that uh -huh. um, Japan ruled Taiwan for almost fifty years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, and so, as an end result, there's definitely a lot of Japanese influence on Taiwanese culture. Uh -huh. But again, only pre World War Two. 
All right, so why don't you start us off? So where would where would be the best place to start with Taiwanese comic books then, Julia? You mean the history of Taiwanese comic yes, books? Yes, yeah, history of Taiwanese comics. Oh uh, yeah, for so like I I mentioned, uh, Kunishi Masuiba was the 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 first guy who uh, made started to make uh, comics in Taiwan, and after mm -hmm. that uh, there were some uh, people who uh, got inspired by this uh, medium, so. There was this guy from uh, Jilong, the city Kilong, mm -hmm. and he was uh, he studied in America, and uh, was inspired by the Puck magazine and the culture around it. And so he also, mm -hmm. he's like the first uh, Taiwanese guy who drew uh, Taiwanese comics, and like mm -hmm. uh, his comics were about uh, the daily lives and uh, mm -hmm. of of course there's a lot of uh, social satire. As a Taiwanese, I don't really understand it because uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, Japanese in it. Because mm -hmm. uh, people from Taiwan back in the day uh, wrote in Japanese. Like the dialect was, uh, they spoke to each other in uh, hak, uh, not Hakka, but Hoklo, uh, mm -hmm. Ming, Ming Nan. Or we would say Taiwanese, the Taiwanese language. Right. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But like in the written script, uh, uh, it, it was in Japanese. So after mm -hmm. the KMT took over, uh, they banned Japanese. So like huh. there was no Japanese book and people were not allowed to write in Japanese. So uh, a lot of people became illiterate because everybody's Chinese, Mandarin Chinese was actually not that good. And mm -hmm. uh, huh. they also, because uh, as I mentioned before, like the, the original uh, comics that uh, uh, came up in Taiwan were uh, political satires that were uh, targeted towards adults. But after the mm -hmm. KMT came in 1945, of course, these uh, political satire cartoons were also banned. So like mm -hmm. uh, comics at that time, uh, uh, you, you could only write uh, children's comics. Uh, the the banning of uh, Japanese, uh, paradoxically, uh, was also beneficial to the uh, comic industry, because mm. now that you cannot read like real books written with words, uh, there's like a, a lot of uh, need for um, image and words. So comics mm. comics became like a um, how to say a very popular medium. And uh, back okay. in the time, uh, as long as uh, you had a few uh, bookshelves and uh, a few benches, and you could uh, start a comic rental business, so like people could uh, borrow comics uh, for a very cheap price. <laughs> so that allowed them to really spread, uh, and um, so suddenly they were everywhere. You were there were comic rental shops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, oh. were they selling even back then? Were they selling? Uh, Japanese comic books as well, like because I know when comics were flourishing in Japan at that point too. Probably, probably not at first, since as I said, like the KMT banned these books, but there was definitely a black market for it. Huh. Hmm. There was always like a parallel black market, even like uh, under uh, authoritarian restrictions. No, that that makes sense. Taiwan has yeah. always had. Um, alternative markets <laughs> yeah 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 anyways so because of this uh that period from 1955 to 1964 uh, uh was a golden decade for uh, taiwanese comics and uh, during this time uh there was like a uh, wuxia comics that uh, drew mm -hmm. upon uh, chinese folklore and mm -hmm. uh there were also this guy liu xingqing who drew who de depicted upon uh, urban and rural gaps because uh, Taiwan was uh, industrializing at that point. So, right. yeah. And also, there was also um, what was another another type of comic that was uh, allowed to flourish was uh, spy comics, like uh, anti-communist uh -huh. comics. So uh -huh. okay. that was always there. But then there was this uh, comic code in uh, 1966 that... Uh, because uh, the KMT thought that uh, comics were corrupting the children's mind because like during the 40s, uh, 
there was a, a news in which、uh, some children they were inspired by the wuxia comics, so they they traveled deep into the mountains to find this、uh, martial art master, and、mm-hmm. kind of、mm-hmm. uh, disappeared. And so I think that was only like a pretense uh, to uh, crack down upon this uh, very uh, popular medium.、Mm, yeah. yeah. But、uh, during the comic code, uh, uh, how to say, when you wanted to publish something, you have to, if it's like a, has like over twenty percent、uh, comic content in it, then you have to send it to uh, uh, the government, and then you have to go through a lot of、uh, inspections and. Because the bureaucracy took so long, and also you had to pay a very high amount of fee for them to process this. So, a lot of、uh, comic magazines、uh, kind of、uh, folded, and a lot of、uh, comic artists uh, uh, had to look for other jobs, or some of them went to Hong Kong. But like、uh, during the eighties, in the near near the end of the KMT rule. There were some newspapers that、uh, opened columns for、uh, Taiwanese comics, and there were like a lot of、uh, competitions going on.、Mm. So that was also like a, a brief renaissance during the eighties. Now, during the eighties, would those have been、uh, color comic books, or would they still be black and white at that point? Well, since it's on the newspapers, so mostly、uh, okay. it's、uh, yeah. black and white. Some of them, so these, some of them became books. And、right. some of these were colored. For example, a、uh, Zheng Wen, who who just、uh, died last year, he he made a、uh, comics that drew upon the、uh, Chinese、uh, history, and、uh, most of his comic books were、uh, in color. Yeah. Okay, and but generally, comic books at this point were mostly being published, or comics were mostly published in newspapers for the most part, and maybe some magazines. Yeah, there was a magazine, but I think it folded very quickly. But like there, there was also book forms. Now, could they publish directly as books? Was there a market if they wanted to, like, literally do a whole book as comic form and then sell it in bookstores? Was there a market for that? Yeah, there was a market. Yeah, especially because、uh, in Taiwan, the、uh, copyright law wasn't、uh, rectified until nineteen ninety two. Ah ha. Yeah, because、uh, Taiwan wanted to、uh, join the WTO. Right. <clears throat> so、uh, before nineteen ninety two, it wasn't technically、uh, illegal to、uh, print Japanese manga. You could sell、uh, pirated Japanese manga in Taiwan, and、uh, no, no one will arrest you. That also killed、um, the Taiwanese、uh, comic industry. The,、mm. Yeah, the domestic market because.、Uh, It's so cheap to just print、uh, Japanese manga.、Uh, you don't even have to pay the author; you just have to print it. So you could buy、uh, a magazine that is like、uh, full of the cream of the crop、uh, Japanese manga for only like thirty NT. So that's kind of like one、uh, dollar,、mm, wow. and it's like su- it's a super thick magazine. And it comes out every week. Nobody can compete with that, right? Yeah,、mm-hmm. yeah. That was I, I'd、Bad. seen a few references to that、um, mm-hmm. in the eighties when the restrictions were were lifted.、Mm-hmm. The page rates for the、uh, the Taiwanese cartoonists had dropped, so people didn't want to get into it because they weren't making very much, as especially as compared to the、uh, the golden age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at least in the golden age, there was like a. Strict uh, co- uh, market control.、Mm, okay. uh, you you didn't have freedom, but at least、uh, you didn't have that much、uh, competitors either. <laughs>、mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So that was the nineteen eighties. So what happened in the nineteen nineties then? Was there a big change as、uh, democracy came in and as、um, intellectual property rights suddenly started to become an issue? Um.、Uh, actually, not really. So, like a lot of、uh, the comic artists that、uh, came into prominence during the eighties, they left for、uh, China, because、mm-hmm. uh, China at that time uh, uh, was still kind of、uh, the comic industry was、uh, still kind of、uh, budding, and、uh, mm-hmm. because in Taiwan eighties in Taiwan at that time the 
comic industry wasn't good, but uh, at least there was something. So, uh, yeah. and because of the, we all speak uh, Mandarin Chinese. So a lot of the comic artists in Taiwan went to develop their career in、uh, China, where there were less competition.、Uh, also, like the 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 publishing houses that、uh, pirated、uh, Japanese manga, they became、uh, legal distributors.、Mm. Yeah, so they had they had to sign contracts with Japan, and.、Uh, But and maybe the 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 prices of the manga had to、uh, go up. But uh, basically, uh, uh, the Japanese、uh, manga is uh, still uh, dominates the、uh, Taiwanese、uh, comic readership. Right. Okay. And probably in the nineteen nineties, then Shonen Jump, which is the top selling Japanese comic magazine, would have moved into Taiwan as well. And that would have influenced things. Although I do know、mm-hmm. that when Shonen Jump came in,、mm-hmm. they did try to include some local Taiwanese content in their magazine. Yes, yes, they did. Like、uh, I remember, there's this、uh, guy called、uh, Zhou Xianzong, and he made a comic called the、uh, Origami Fighters.、Oh, uh, uh, it was kind of like a targeted for、um, young boys. It was a shonen manga. And、mm-hmm. uh, they they will make robots out of、uh, origami. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. and like、uh, at the the end of、uh, each comic, there will be a、uh, step by step instructions on how to make these、uh, robots、uh, with、huh. paper. It was quite educational. Oh. oh well, yeah, that's good <laughs> to have some educational com、uh, content in a、uh, comic <laughs> book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Huh. You know, it's interesting. You mentioned just to jump back in time for a moment that in 1966 you said that they began、uh, crack down on comics that they had developed your, their comics code because if、mm-hmm. I remember right, it was only 1963 that、mm-hmm. the Americans had their own comics code. Oh, did they? And, and so,、yeah. I I wonder if、mm-hmm. that if that's what、uh, if the Taiwanese government was taking a cue from the American government at that point. Mm, could be, <laughs> could be. What, what do you think, Don? I don't know because the、um, the comics code that we had in North America,、mm-hmm. it it was a lot of it was content oriented. It was like the bad guy could never win. Ah,、um, yeah.、Mm. Yeah, you couldn't show like zombies or or vampires or supernatural monsters or that.、Mm-hmm. And a lot of it, the idea seems to have been specifically to、uh, to ding. Um, EC Comics, which was the the biggest company at the time,、mm-hmm. but but I looked up some of the、uh, the Taiwanese limits, and a lot、mm-hmm. of them were strange because it's stuff like um、mm-hmm. the dictate line weight, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, line weight, yeah, and and the directions that you could draw lines and the background couldn't interact with the foreground or anything. It was、mm-hmm. they're really strange. Well, that's like、uh, the formalistic. Because like there's there's also content wise there there was also、um, certain restrictions. For example, uh, uh, the bad guys couldn't be a, a ba- bad scientist because、mm, science、yeah. is always good. So、mm-hmm. bad guys cannot use science, and like、uh, you cannot have、uh, weapons that are、uh, beyond this age. So like there's no lasers and there's no talking r- robots and. For example, Mickey Mouse shouldn't.、Uh, Mickey Mouse couldn't be published in Taiwan because animals、uh, don't talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually,、wow. actually,、uh, for the formalistic aspect, I think、uh, the 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 Polish also had、uh, their own comic code and also had、mm. like uh, uh, restrictions on lines and whatever.、Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah,、hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't know much about Eastern European comics, but we'll have to look that up sometime. Mm, mm. Hmm. Yeah, there, there were po- Poland was one of the weird ones because again,、um, post war they they were kind of in the situation that they were sort of in the middle. Yeah.、Mm-hmm. So you still had some of the Western and some of like the Eastern European ideas conflicting. Because、mm-hmm. yeah, there there were other countries had.、Um, Had restrictions, some more than others, and some were、mm-hmm. stranger than others. 
Uh, there should there should be a a paper about the uh, um, comic codes around the world of <laughs> comparing like a comparative uh, paper it should be really interesting. Yeah, there, there's someone's PhD project right yeah. there. Some one, listener, get on it. <laughs> um, actually, I was just also look, looking things up. Um, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. most of the it looks like most of the Japanese comics in mm. the 1970s and 80s were pub- in Taiwan were published by Tong Li Publishing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh, still around. And it says it says according to the entry here, for 15 years Tong Li was the largest producer of pirated comics, redoing more than a thousand titles in all. Yeah, yeah, and totally. For part of that time, 50 a month with just nine employees. <laughs> uh, they work hard, man. <laughs> <laughs> they work very hard, apparently. Also, yeah. like, uh, there's a very, how do I say? A, there was a kind of a very interesting uh, phenomena about the pirated comics uh, back mm-hmm. then. For example, uh, the most popular comic, uh, Japanese manga in Taiwan back then was uh, Doraemon. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And, like, uh, Doraemon was so popular that uh, uh, there were a lot of uh, competing... Uh, publishers uh printing and uh so uh mm-hmm. because there was not enough Doraemon to go around so oh. uh sometimes uh in in like in a huge uh, stack of Doraemon you would find uh several chapters that were drawn weirdly mm-hmm. and uh usually th- that's when they hire uh, a Taiwanese uh, illustrator to kind of uh, mimic the the style mm-hmm. of Doraemon and uh, oh. we say, add water to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they, as we call that filler. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, to... they, they were they were there as filler, so they're just adding extra fake ty- fake Doraemon stories just to make them the book longer and to uh, pad, yeah. pad it out or add filler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like some oh. of them were just uh, copying other panels and then just uh, compiling it to a strange. Uh, new pages but there were actually like uh, uh, original stories uh, recreated <laughs> yeah really yeah oh. so that's a interesting side phenomenon and sometimes you will see oh. signatures of these uh, Taiwanese illustrators uh, in the edge of the panel right and they oh. will sign their own name <laughs> <laughs> interesting yeah. So okay, so there's Tong Li. Are there any other major uh, Taiwanese comic publishers? Oh, Tong Li, Da Ran, yeah, like, and Jian Duan, I think. But uh, Jian, mm-hmm. Jian Duan, yeah. Mm. But like these are all Japanese manga right. publishers. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there yeah. aren't any publishers that just publish Taiwanese comics. Uh, there's a uh, in Taiwan. There's this uh, publishing house called the uh, Gaia. Mm-hmm. Uh, they 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 pu- they mainly publish uh, Taiwanese comics and um, mo- all of them are uh, in color. Hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, do and they release them in magazine format or as books? As books. Hmm. Yeah, uh, but uh, because the uh, Gaia, it's a newer publishing house, and because uh, right now the popular format for artists in Taiwan to. Uh, use is the digital comic digital oh, comic okay. so like uh like right now digital comics most of them are um in color and the mm-hmm. format is kind of different we call it the strip comics so you can mm-hmm. uh, uh it's uh more adapted to the phone so you can read it on the phone right oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. so like uh even the the panel uh arrangement and uh are kind of different and a very interesting thing is that the style also kind of uh, changes with the the panel um, arrangement. Um, mm-hmm. How do you say that in French? Uh, maison scene? Like uh, to change the scenes? Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, like uh, there will be some new technique uh, put into the changing of scenes. Okay, okay. interesting. Well, yeah. I know what the Koreans have done with their web comics. I don't know. Mm-hmm. If, have you have you ever seen a Korean web comic, Julia? Oh yeah, because uh, uh, the Taiwanese artists uh, 
most of them、uh, publish on the Korean、uh, platforms. Oh,、hmm. so that's what's going on. The,、mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. For those who aren't familiar, what Koreans have done with their web comics is they've kind of they've take they don't use comic pages or layouts as we understand them anymore. As as Julia just said, they're designed to be read on a phone. So what they do is they have there's it's kind of like a long white page, and then there's like panels kind of arranged on the white page, but they're not. Always next to each other, and the panel size will change, and sometimes things will be outside the panels, and、mm-hmm. the effect is it, it creates almost、um, it's almost like watching an animated program in some ways. Like it it creates a flow to it that's very different than you would see in a North American or even a Japanese comic book. Like they really、mm-hmm. deconstructed it and built a form that's kind of optimized for for mobile mobile reading. Yeah, yeah, and. It makes heavy use of white space, and yeah, it's it's very interesting. If anyone has the、yeah. chance, I'll I'll link in the show notes to a、uh, samples of some Korean comic books. You can see what I'm talking about. Uh-huh, uh-huh.、Um, but but they, even there, they have different styles or and different approaches. But it's interesting. So the so a lot of Taiwanese artists then are selling their material in Korea now. Yeah, yeah, yeah.、Uh, I mean, you can still read it in Chinese because they do the translation. Right. Yeah, yeah, but、um, that's also like how to say the downside of of、uh, Taiwanese、uh, comic industries because、uh, we we have、mm-hmm. a very weak、uh, digital publishing、uh, platform. Like it's not、right. really developed. So Taiwanese comic artists, like in the past, Taiwanese comic artists when they wanted to、uh, really promote their career, they had to go to Japan. Now they sell their comics to a Korean、uh, platform. <laughs> hmm. Right. Yeah. That, that actually that makes sense though, because the Koreans have done a really good job of、mm-hmm. monetizing or coming up with ways to make money off、uh, online stories like、mm-hmm. online novels and、mm-hmm. comic books. Because what they do is the site they have sites like Naver, where on Naver what happens is you you buy credits like you can read stuff for free,、mm-hmm. but、uh, if you want, but the things you're reading are behind. By by which I mean you're reading it two or three weeks after it's been released、mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. free. So if you want to read the latest thing, you have to spend credits, which cost real money. Yeah, and so that's how、mm-hmm. they're making their money. They're making their money from people's impatience. Yeah, people, yeah. people want to read the latest stuff and they want to read it right now. So even young people are willing to actually pay for it. Yeah, usually, yeah. yeah. To get the latest chapters or the latest comics, and they've really made it work in、yeah. terms of、uh, making money. Yeah, and so. I can see why they'd want to be involved in that market, as opposed to I know a little bit about China's comic book market, and、mm-hmm. it doesn't pay. <laughs> it basically, <is> <laughs> I,、um, China's comic market, from what little I know,、mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not an expert. I hope we will have someone on eventually who is.、Mm-hmm. Uh, but from what I know, you、oh, uh, they have a certain number of stories for you. They pay you,、mm-hmm. and there's a huge problem with piracy. Mm-hmm. Uh, in China, of course, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the best you can hope for is that you'll make money from merchandise, like、um, uh, maybe、yeah. selling it for a game or T-shirts or other things like that. The comic、yeah. itself is not likely to make you any money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the publisher of that website will try to take the copyright from you, so they can make the money that actual from. So you won't even get the merchandising money, or you'll <laughs> get very little from it. I see. I see. Where at least the Korean、uh, publishers are actually sharing the profit, or at least some of it, with the actual creators. I see.、Um, I see. Is, so that's why their market is actually,、uh, I would argue, doing better than the Chinese market that way. Anyway, at least for comic books. Anyway. But I don't know. Like、uh, how to say?、Uh, I mentioned my article. This、uh, guy called、uh, Cai Zhizhong.、Uh, mm-hmm. He's a、uh, he.、Uh, he he made his name by、uh, adapting on uh, uh, Chinese philosophy. Yes,、mm. I、yeah. got four of his books. Ah,、oh, you did. I bought, yeah, I bought them.、Uh, they released them in English back in the nineteen nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And、um, I've got.、Uh, there are each something called,、uh, for example,、uh, Lao Tzu speaks.、Uh-huh. Um, what was it? Zhang something speaks. There are four or five of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly.、Um, Sun Tzu speaks.、Um, uh-huh. Sun Tzu for our English listeners、uh-huh. speaks. And、um, so that was so they released them, and they're beautiful. That was my first exposure to Taiwanese comics was、uh, was Chung's work. And、uh, if you、mm-hmm. get the chance, they're they're a beautiful example of taking these Chinese philosophical concepts and making、yeah. it easily accessible through comic form. 
Oh, uh, do you know he has an app right now? No, I don't. Okay. So you can just how to say, uh, because because he's made so many comics and like his uh, comics have、mm-hmm. been already been translated into like twenty、uh, something languages. So you could just、right. uh, uh, download his app and then、mm-hmm. just、uh, buy his books like、uh, very cheap, just on the app. And you have your own wow, library, Cai Zizhong library. <laughs> wow! I will put that in the show notes. So you can go check that out because if you're into Chinese philosophy、mm-hmm. and you want to experience it, I highly, highly recommend that、yeah. uh, you check it out. Chinese、um, Buddhism.、Mm. Any, any, basically Asian philosophy in general, not just、mm-hmm. Chinese. He explored. There's one on Zen Buddhism, as you、mm-hmm. said. There's.、Mm-hmm. Uh, Many different th- Chinese thinkers and、uh, Asian thinkers. He's done comic book versions of their works, and、yeah. they're very accessible and beautiful to look at too. Yeah, yeah, yeah.、Um, you said in your article that he actually delivered a speech at、uh, Ishi, which was like、yeah. the. I assume that that's that speech though is in Chinese, right? Yeah,、uh, Ishi is kind of like equivalent of a TED Talk in China. Oh, okay.、Uh, he's、uh, how to say he's kind of regarded as I don't know. Maybe a saint or something in China, like、mm. uh, he's been on interview.、Uh, he's been on、uh, shows where they kind of, the show is called like the Awakened, like、mm-hmm. they 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 interview enlightened people, and so and these enlightened people talk about their lives. <laughs> oh, and、uh, he also oh right and like.、Uh, He also wrote a book on、uh, physics, and he、mm-hmm. claims that he kind of debunks Einstein. <laughs> oh, and I don't、okay. know. I don't know though. But like, uh, uh, he's、uh, he's a very mysterious person. Now, did、um, uh, Tsai? Did he actually、um, do his own comics as well? Did he have his own、uh, characters and his own work that he did, or has it mostly been、uh, adapting? Other people's work to comic books. Yeah, I think he had he he did uh, make uh, some comics of his own, like when he was young. But the、mm-hmm. the ones that really sold was、uh, the ones that adapted、uh, texts that、um, other people think、uh, is、uh, too hard to read or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.、Okay. And like、okay. an introduction, an introduction to a lot of、uh, difficult texts. Right.、Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, who are some other artists that、um, that should be highlighted? So, who are some of the major co- Taiwanese comic book artists that people should be looking into or mean, learning about right now, or like in the past?、Uh, okay, well, let's do the past first. So, in the past, <laughs> who were the who were the major influencers? Who were the major ones that affected the industry? Well, I don't know. I feel like、uh, there is like a double standard. Like there were there were the ones that were popular then and. And there were also the ones that you feel like,、um, how to say, it's not too embarrassing to show off right now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, for example, if you're into、uh, um, art, you、mm-hmm. should check out Chen Wen. <laughs> okay, Chen Wen. Okay. Yeah, because、um, uh, his style is、uh, how to say,、uh, kind of like adapting a. Chinese、uh, inkwash style, but also you having a very experimental spin on it. So he will like burn the paper, or he will like use soap, or he would use a、uh, dirty, very dirty、uh, ink brushes to create、mm-hmm. kind of a surreal effect. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and like、uh, he he published a lot, like he published in Japan and. Uh, he won a very big award in Japan, which、mm-hmm. it was usually only reserved for、uh, a local artist, a Japanese artist. But he won it anyway, and someone,、uh, someone even like、uh, criticized him in the Japanese paper, saying that all these foreigners、mm-hmm. shouldn't win this award. And uh, uh, there was also like、uh, a game. Like he he、mm-hmm. he 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 made a game on、uh, Three Kingdoms. Like、uh, three three Rome- kingdoms. Yeah, yeah three kingdoms. Yeah, romance King- of the three kingdoms. <clears throat> yeah, 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 and like、uh, the the title of the game was、uh, Zheng Wen's uh, Three uh, Three Kingdoms. 
Three Kingdoms. Okay. Mm. It's very rare that you you use the illustrator's name to try to sell the game. Right. Wow. Yeah. And uh, well, also there's this guy called Zhu De Yong. Uh, he's mm-hmm. like the one of the billionaires in China right now. Like uh, oh. he he earns a lot of money. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't. I personally don't really like his comics, though. But he's popular mm. anyway. He 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 came from the um, newspaper era, so a lot of his comics uh, are kind of like four four panel comics, and uh, mm-hmm. they kind of uh, poke fun on uh, marriage life, uh, urban superficiality, or whatever. I feel like it's kind of a misogynistic, but it's very popular mm. in China, and uh, there were some mm. movies uh, adapted. So, hmm. uh, uh, okay. I mean, if you're interested in what the uh, Chinese like, <laughs> right? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, as you mentioned past versus present. So, who is the mo- who are the most popular right now? Then, well, I don't think you can say popular, but. Mm-hmm. Because like, or how, influential, or how to say my personal <laughs> what, what I think is uh, gems. <laughs> my personal gems is uh, mm-hmm. I really like Chen Jian. Uh, okay. He um, his mother was a art teacher, I think. So his style is also kind of like in the wood carving style. Mm-hmm. Like uh, that's quite how to say. It, it's kind of, it looks very different from a Japanese manga. Right. But anyways, and uh, mm-hmm. it talks about... It, it also, how to say... Because uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the past, I feel like... Uh, because uh, uh, comic books, uh, you oftentimes it's about mastery. Mm-hmm. Like uh, a little boy, he wants to master something and mm-hmm. so and he draws upon something and uh um uh and becomes this a uh, very how to say whole identity right but uh um so for example uh Zheng Wen, um mm-hmm. his stuff is very aesthetic but where does this aesthetic come from it's from uh this uh very glamorous uh chinese uh uh, tradition like five thousand years of uh, Chinese history and like oh yeah. so beautiful so glamorous so grand right something mm-hmm. like that creates a, a kind of a, how to say a sense of pride in you mm-hmm. and it's not just uh, it's not just uh, China but Japan Japanese manga too like the ninja manga whatever manga also draws on some kind of uh, tradition that makes you really proud and. Uh, but like uh, in Chen Jian's uh, Son of the Sea, it, mm-hmm. it kind of, uh, how to say, there's there's no opportunity for uh, this kind of uh, pride. Um, mm-hmm. So like uh, the, the fishing, because it starts from a fisherman, and this right. fishing skill is uh, kind of, uh, they learn it from the Japanese, and it, mm-hmm. it's kind of dying. And... Right. Uh, they found a little boy in the middle of the sea and uh this little boy because uh he had a name plaque on his ankle and that name plaque is uh, Heizo which is a uh, kind of like a Japanese name and so right. uh they say okay so your name is Heizo but like at that time in, in Taiwan that was just after the Japanese left so there was kind of like a anti-Japanese uh, anti-colonial sentiment so this uh, Japanese kid, he feels very uh, not at ease in Taiwan, but then right. he likes uh, he likes comic manga, so he mm-hmm. goes to uh, Japan to uh, try to develop his uh, career, and uh, and yet uh, because he's regarded as a Taiwanese in Japan, so it's also not easy for him, and so like there's mm-hmm. no chance for this kind of uh, unified identity. And uh, uh, I feel how to say that kind of uh, an ease uh, uh, resonates with uh, uh, me, or maybe mm-hmm. as a Taiwanese more. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's less naive, I think. 
Right. Well, mm -hmm. history is complicated, and identity is complicated too. And I think that yeah. uh, the Son of the Sea, it sounds like, represents that. Yeah. And, uh, but I mean, like, uh, Son of the Sea is one, but like, there's also this uh, another comic that I just read last night, <laughs> and okay. I and I think uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. called the uh, um, uh, Patao. Which is a uh, uh, Beitou. Uh, in in Taiwan, in the north of Taiwan, there is this uh, uh, place called Beitou, and that's where the hot springs are. Mm -hmm. And like, there's a lot of uh, sulfur, a lot of smoke, and uh, Beitou. Mm -hmm. It I, the the name Beitou is actually uh, an ab ab Aboriginal name, and mm -hmm. uh, that name means witch. Because uh, people thought that uh, why is there so much smoke, so much sulfur? There must be witches here, and okay. uh, yeah, so it's it kind of plays on that uh, legend and say that oh there there are actually witches uh, uh, living in Taiwan, and like oh, the okay. <laughs> and then there That's also cool. it is, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and like uh, there is uh, the enemies of these witches are. Um, it's also uh, drawn from uh, history. Uh, the and the witch hunters are uh, pa, uh, padai, which is uh, in in Chinese we call it bai tuan, which is like a a secret uh, military uh, consultant group in uh, uh, who are Japanese and they mm -hmm. they kind of aid the KMT to fight the communists. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so the descendants of the padai. Are witch hunters, mm -hmm. and uh, and it plays on like uh, these these people who are who had who who had some kind of mission back in the day, but uh, mm -hmm. they're just uh, doing their job right now. But they kind of like uh, lost the said like, oh, why are we hunting witches? Why do we want to do this? They kind of uh, forget mm -hmm. and feel yeah. kind of lost. And these witches are. Uh, you think that they'd be shrewd, but they're actually not. They're quite how to say, also kind of out of it, and mm -hmm. and like uh, they don't really pay attention. They get killed e easily. <laughs> oh, okay. Huh. <laughs> and is, uh, is this comic very serious, or is it? What's the tone of this book then? The tone of this book is, uh, I would say, uh. Um, maybe a little uh, shoujo manga style. Oh, okay. Huh. But I mean, like, uh, um, because the author he he uh, he uh, he I think he he read the uh, DC comics growing up, so mm. the style is also like not that Japanese. Oh, okay. Yeah, huh. but I mean, it's fun because like the. The witches they have their own powers. Like there's a witch of uh, tragedy, and mm -hmm. her power her power comes from uh, um, like uh, if someone wronged her, and then she would uh, stare at that person. And, like she would uh, take an antihistamine, and like mm -hmm. the 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 person being cursed will have allergic reactions, and uh, also like another there's this an another witch who's a witch of animals and you think mm -hmm. like oh she's like some kind of a natural goddess a goddess of nature who uh calls animals but actually she's a uh kind of an illustrator uh working in tai taipei and mm -hmm. uh her 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 source of power is her poverty so like uh uh, she would have a lot of she would summon a lot of animals and then she would draw these animals and then send them send them to her clients, and she would get paid very little. But like, uh, if she starts er earning real money, then her um, uh, power will disappear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, huh. I, I shouldn't uh, reveal too much, but I don't okay. know. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's that. Well, that's enough to get readers interested. Okay, I'll see if I can yeah. find and put a link to that in the show notes. Okay, that that does sound kind of interesting. I'd like to yeah. see that. There might be Actually, a could... movie coming out. <laughs> oh, okay. could you send me a link to that? Yeah, can no you send problem. me some link to where I could find a sample of it online? Or is no it? Problem. Were you reading it online or as a book? Actually, you can read it for free on Comic Call. 
It's like all、oh. color and everything free. <laughs> Oh, okay, a comic co. I'm. Is that a Taiwanese site? No, it's a Korean platform. Okay.、Mm-hmm. All right.、So, yeah. If you can send me the link to that, okay.、Mm. Um, I, I'd be curious to see it and share it with other people. But this this is by a Taiwanese artist. Interesting.、Oh, and、okay. he's like also very young. He's、mm. like only twenty six. Right.、Mm. Yeah, and in the comic you can see a lot of how to say Taiwan scenery, which is、uh, right something you don't really see in. You know, comics coming from other countries. Well,、yeah. well, you would see their local scenery. You wouldn't see much Taiwanese <laughs> scenery, and I mean, I wouldn't expect a Canadian artist to show a lot of Taiwan. True, um, true, true. Um, I wish they did, though. I mean, Taiwan is a beautiful country.、Um, <laughs> anyone who has not anyone who has not been there should go check Taiwan out. It's beautiful, green, mountainous. I mean,、mm-hmm. not all of it's beautiful. I mean, the、mm-hmm. cities are not always beautiful. No, but, no.、Uh, <laughs> But the people generally are,、uh, I mean, in, as in you know, as in friendly and warm, and、uh, I, lo- I love Taiwan so much. Anyway, <laughs> um, so speaking of、uh, Taiwanese characters, so is there a typical Taiwanese like hero? Like, is there there a typical Taiwanese lead character that that、uh, tends to pop up in Taiwanese stories? No, but I mean the powers that they conjure are uh, usually uh, the the. the Taiwanese artists will want to、uh, how to say tie in with the local culture as much as、mm. possible. Ah,、uh, okay. So, for example, in、uh, Patao, like there's a scene in which the the witches uh um uh summon their how to say their their familiars. Their, yeah, their、like、familiars. The animals go with them.、Mm. Yeah, and like they made the the decorations on in the Taoist temples come alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and fight off the patai. Yeah,、I、so、see. like I mean, I use see some、uh, local colors, but、uh, the、mm-hmm. I don't think there's a、uh, how to say there's a general hero that yeah with a certain characteristic. I don't think so. Okay.、Hmm. Well, how about genres? Is there any particular genre that like Taiwanese、uh, love to read about, or that Taiwanese comic artists usually work in? Uh, actually, I think the genre is、uh, very tied in with the、uh, Japanese manga、uh, tradition.、Mm-hmm. So, like the genres that you would see in Japanese manga, you'd see in Taiwan. But、uh, I think、uh, there's, I mean, there's this、uh, intention, or well, someone is trying to make waves uh,、mm-hmm. on uh, documentary comics,、uh, right? Especially this、uh, public publishing press called、uh, Slow Work. Uh, they are trying. They are trying very hard to uh, uh, how to say connect Taiwan with、uh, Southeast Asia, Asia in general.、Right. So um, uh, they have this、uh, magazine called Monsoon, and、uh, they commission、uh, Taiwanese artists and、uh, Southeast Asian artists or artists from、uh, Hong Kong, Macau,、uh, to kind of like.、Uh, Right, right, right. Comics that are how to say、um, derived from reality, the reality、mm-hmm. that they live in. So、right. there's this、uh, architect who's、mm-hmm. also a comic artist, and he would、uh, draw about the、uh, architecture in、uh, Macau. Or、mm-hmm. there's this、uh, musician in Taiwan who's also a comic artist, and he would、uh, draw about the music scene in、uh, Taipei. Ah, okay.、Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah.、Uh, trying to how to say promote Asian culture. Well,、mm. not necessary. It's kind of like um, uh, because uh, comic as a, a medium is actually very versatile, and、uh, mm-hmm. because there's image and there's words, and so、uh, to bring、um, other parts of Asia, how to say, closer to each other, to let us know what、mm. each other are doing. Right. Oh, okay. Don, did you have anything you want to ask? Um, yeah. The one thing I kind of always wonder about about comics is、oh. how does society in general perceive them? Are they considered like something for everybody, or just for kids, or for juvenile delinquents, or how does that work? Well, in Taiwan,、um, comic kind of started as a, a material for kids, and usually, uh. uh Uh, uh, the parents, the parents will scold the kids if、uh, 
are reading comics because then they're not <laughs> studying. And、uh, kids who aspire to become、uh, comic artists are also、um, uh, uh, discouraged uh, because、mm. uh, it doesn't make a lot of money. The parents rather you be a, a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and so like in yeah in in Taiwan the general general perception on、uh, comics is、uh, still very stigmatized,、mm. but、uh, the government is trying to、uh, has has、uh, saw the potential in comics and because with comics you can also adapt them into.、Uh, Uh, drama, you can adapt them into、uh, movies, and you can make a lot of、uh, profit out of it. And you can also, how to say, influence、uh, other other countries and get them to know you. Yeah, like how、right. Japan did. So uh, uh, I think the government is、uh, catching up, uh, but uh, still,、um, there is still much to be done. I think. Well, how is the government encouraging comics culture in Taiwan? Well, aside from like, there's a Golden Comics Award、uh, in Taiwan,、uh, which is、uh, how to say, and like the 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 winners、uh, will get、uh, a lot of、uh, offerings, and、uh, also、um, there's this project which is uh, uh, quite interesting called the、uh, Creative、uh, called CCC. Let me see what it stands for. Wait a second.、Mm-hmm. A、mm-hmm. uh, creative comic collection, which、mm-hmm. is a、uh, a collaboration、um, with the、uh, historical digital archives in Taiwan. Like you would have a、uh, museum archives, and there'll be、uh, old photographs and、um, uh, old documents, and、uh, they'll get someone to uh, uh, use these materials and.、Um, Turn them into stories and get,、um, and they will have pictures, and、uh, so the、uh, artists can、uh, refer to these、uh, photographs and、um, make a make a comic. So like, there's this、uh, magazine called、uh, Creative Comic Collection, and、um, each volume is、uh, maybe focus on a different aspect of、uh, Taiwanese culture. Like there'll be. Uh, like an Aboriginal uh, culture, there be a Minan, there be a、uh, uh, social issues,、um, mm-hmm. social protests,、uh, and、uh, they're quite how to say. Oh, it was a well received project, and it kind of、uh, stopped after a couple of years, but it's、uh, restarting again.、Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I think、uh, I don't know. Like in the past, it was Gaia who was、uh, responsible of the project, but I don't know who is responsible right now. But、uh, a lot of、uh, how to say,、uh, a lot of these、uh, comic artists who、uh, appeared on、um, this magazine,、uh, some of them continue to de- develop the story. So、um, there is also there is also this、uh, very it's also very popular. A comic right now called "The、uh, Historical Fantasy Scrolls of a Northern Northern City" by、uh, Akru, and、uh, it's about、uh, Taipei in the nineteen thirties,、mm-hmm. uh, because then was still a、uh, Japanese colonial era, but like Taiwan was quite an open place and、um, very different from right now, and、uh, it's a story about a、um, a tea shop. Uh, and they're also how to say, it was also guarded by、uh, some magical creatures, and like、uh, there there'll be chances uh, to uh, how to present to the reader the old Taipei scenes from、right. the old Taipei, you know.、Hmm. So how has、um, Taiwanese comic culture influenced Taiwanese culture in general? We've talked a lot about how.、Hmm. Um, Taiwanese comics have been influenced by Taiwan's culture, but how have the co- how have comics influenced Taiwan's actual culture?、Mm, I think it's still it's all still in the making because、uh, mm, it's only very recently that uh, this uh, like Patel and this、uh, Akru's、uh, 
comic, uh, uh, how to say, uh, became uh, popular because right. it, because uh, yeah. So uh, and like these these works like a cruise uh, comic is also going to be adapted into like a, a TV series or something. So mm -hmm. mm, I think it's still all in the making because I think the downside of uh, Taiwan comics in Taiwan is that. Uh, usually, you really have to actually want to look. Um, hmm. You want to look uh, before you find something. Like you don't. It's not like a Dragon Ball in which uh, you you knew nothing about it and then just uh, comes into your periphery, and then hmm. and then you recognize it. It's something that you really have to look for, and it's right. because uh, the. Uh, how to say? There's not enough uh, publicity, but wow, I mean okay. the people who do, they have a, a really good appreciation for it. Hmm. Yeah, wow. actually, this sounds a lot like the Canadian comic book industry. Ah, uh, does it? We, <laughs> we have a Canadian comic book industry. Exactly. Yeah. That's that... <laughs> um, because we're the little brother of the United States, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, any Canadian comic book artist or mm -hmm. comic book, they all just go to the United States. <laughs> so yeah. we basically, we do have a very, very tiny Canadian comic book industry, but mm -hmm. it's been completely overshadowed by the United States. Yeah. That, because see. that's where the money is. And yeah. So, yeah. So, so as an end result, Canadians do do comics, but not very yeah. often. Mm -hmm. yeah you yeah. like uh, if you ask are you like a taiwanese uh everyday person like they will also say huh we have a, a mm. taiwanese comic scene <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but you mentioned back i think at the top of the show you mentioned that there was there was a festival or convention or something about to celebrate taiwanese comics that you were originally supposed to look into yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that was uh, held by the um, uh, uh, comic artist uh, labor union, I think. But huh. uh, the the festival was kind of a. Uh, it was not. It was not how to say. It wasn't not that well organized, and right. it was also criticized for being uh, kind of uh, overlooking the newer generation because actually there's a quite a wide generation gap between the comic artists in the 80s and the comic artists right now and because mm. like the labor union they're headed by comic artists from the 80s so uh, uh, people will say it's not that a good representation of the comic scene in general right yeah I see so, okay so why why do you think there's such a generation gap between the two? Is it just cultural, where the one group grew up under the KMT and the other group grew up under the democratic rule? Is that it? Mm, uh, not necessarily. For example, like the the comic artists from the eighties, they might still gripe about um, how people don't buy comics or only mm. read Japanese comics or or or. Um, or that the government doesn't really, uh, or that there are no new comic artists, or that the government doesn't care about it. But like the mm. newer newer generation, uh, a lot of them are maybe publishing on uh, digital formats, uh, formats in which uh, mm, the current, uh, uh, the 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 older generation doesn't really uh, know about or are not that mm. familiar with, and so also because like. As I said, in Taiwan, you really have to look, and mm. it's not just something that comes up. So um, maybe how to say, there's still some research required for the artists that you know, the older artists or the labor right. unions. Yeah. Right, right. Now, are most of the newer artists are they part of the labor union or are they just staying away from it and completely independent? Um, I not I'm I don't I'm not that familiar. They don't they didn't okay. they didn't they didn't give us the list. <laughs> I don't know they who's didn't in give it. Sure. Okay, no, but I mean, okay, like no, the no head, problem. the head, the head is uh, you the the people who speak to the press. They're all right. um, from the eighties. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, I yeah. can see that. 
So if yeah. someone was traveling to Taiwan, let's say they were going mm-hmm. to Taipei, and they wanted to try to find Taiwanese mm. comic books, mm-hmm. where would they look? Uh, like, uh, where would be the... Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure about the rental shops. I mean, there are still a lot of rental shops, but uh, at least you'll be drowned in a sea of uh, Japanese manga before you find something mm. Taiwanese. But mm. there's uh, this shop called uh, Manga Sick. Uh, it's in... Um, uh, it's near the Thai Power Building, uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> near uh, Taiwan University, Taiwan National University. Uh, yes. It's a very cute little shop, and uh, it sells uh, zines and uh, co- locally produced comics. Uh, also, mm-hmm. like there's also like a selection of uh, Japanese comics, which they they think is classic, and mm-hmm. uh, you can like uh, pay a hundred NT. And uh, read everything in the shop. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's it is a sit and read shop if you want. So they have coffee and things as well. Yeah, you can buy or you can like uh, pay a hundred and read. I think it's a quite a nice business model, concerning that hmm. people rarely buy oh. books right now. Yeah, hmm. okay. well, I hope <laughs> they succeed. Have they yeah. been around a long time, or are they fairly new? Uh, I think they, well. Uh, I think they've uh, been around maybe a year or two. Ah, uh, okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's probably why I don't know them, because I actually used to live in that area. I lived in uh, Gangwon. Oh, Gangwon, for, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I lived there as, uh, for almost two years. Uh, I um, So when I was living in Taiwan. So mm-hmm. so I so I know Thai Power Building. I know where you're talking about, but I don't mm-hmm. remember that place. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so... That's good. So if anyone wants to go and check, go, if everyone is traveling to Taipei, and everyone should, um, mm-hmm. and you want to go check uh, check them out, uh, that's mm-hmm. not a bad place to go. Mm-hmm. Actually, is is there, I guess that makes sense, because next to the university, there's going to be a lot of students, and students mm-hmm. are exactly the target audience for this kind of material, for comic books, really. Uh, yeah. Student, oh. Comics appeal to students, so that makes sense. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Don, was there any other questions you had? No, actually, I've been listening in. There's a few of these comics I really want to read now. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, awesome. So, actually, hey, Ling, so mm-hmm. what, Okay, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your own project? So, what is it that um, you do as uh, creator? Uh, creator. Well, right now I'm right now I'm working on a compilation for uh, an Australian compilation. I think. There's this uh, thing called an image to audio converter, and uh, so you just uh, <clears throat> you put a put an image in, and they'll um, how to say uh, convert the image into audio, and then okay. uh, we we make uh, music from the samples that came from the image. But I've never heard of this before. This is, that, <laughs> that sounds incredible. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I've still yet to finish it, but that's what I'm supposed to be working on right now. And uh, <laughs> I also have this uh, zine called um, I'm at least I'm compiling this zine called um, I Had a Dream Last Night, and okay. uh, it's uh, this 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 sentence uh, is borrowed from um, uh, there's this. Uh, Internet forum called PTT in Taiwan, which is kind of like the equivalent of Reddit, uh, okay. and like there's this board called uh, Gossiping, and that's a place where um, uh, sometimes you would start the uh, you would start your post with "I had a dream last night" because if you're going to uh, say some uh, say 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 uh, for example a some politician has some uh, dirty uh, business under the side, um, but you don't oh, want okay. to get sued, <laughs> so you would start uh-huh. the uh, post with that. And uh, I want to have my zine uh, focus on the Taiwanese uh, um, rave scene or electronic music huh. scene, and uh, so um, I will have uh, Taiwanese uh, and uh, also expats in Taiwan. Uh, mm-hmm. To write about to write about interesting stories that are related to um, uh, these uh, parties in Taiwan. Hmm. Huh, inter- How big is the electronic dance and music scene in Taiwan? 
I think、uh, probably bigger than the Taiwanese comic scene. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like,、uh, yeah, techno, techno is really big in Taiwan.、Uh, mm. I kind of want to bring a speed core, speed core into Taiwan because I feel like、uh, there's just too much techno. It's kind of boring. Uh, okay. And there's also like a very loyal side、uh, trance, side trance th-、uh, scene, and、mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah. So because Taiwan has a lot of、uh, mountains and whatnot that are actually quite,、um, quite accessible and not so far from the cities, so、right. I think、yeah. these kind of、uh, um, scenes can thrive. So is that where people where you set up a kind of party up on the mountains or up up in、uh, just a one time one w-、uh, event basically for people to come up and and、uh, appreciate? Is that what that is? You mean、uh, for side trends? Yes. Yeah.、Mm, yeah. So like、uh, there's this uh,、um, there's this uh, place called um, uh, it's like a botanic garden, but.、Uh, mm-hmm. At the along Taoyuan, and、uh, mm-hmm. that's that's kind of a quite a quite、uh, a place where people often have a、uh, side trance parties, mm, right? Mm, mm. And、oh, uh, yeah, last year or、mm-hmm. last year, I threw a free techno party、um, in Shuling.、Uh, mm-hmm. It was in an old factory,、oh. and.、Uh, Uh, we kind of squatted there, so later there was police, but、um, okay. <laughs> we we managed to、uh, procrastinate until the end. Yeah, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> I I bet it was. Is it hard to organize one of these things? Um,、uh, depends. Like if you're having an event in a club, then um, uh, if you're having an event in a club, then、uh, it's going to be easier because uh.、Mm-hmm. There'll be people sorting out, you know, tickets and whatnot for you. <clears throat> <clears throat> but you also have to pay a、uh, venue fee.、Uh, but if you if you throw a party、uh, at a squad, then you won't you won't you can have um I would say you can have a free party and、uh, kind of、uh, profit from the drinks that you sell. Um, right. But then you'll have to have people to man the bar and people to watch out for the police, yeah.、Mm-hmm. So and also you have to be responsible for、uh, the safety. So, right.、Uh, it all depends, I guess. Yeah.、Uh, and oh, and also、uh, I'm going to uh, translate uh,、mm-hmm. the zine. So、mm-hmm. like、uh, the locals,、uh, Taiwanese Taiwanese story. Oh, most of them will be written in Mandarin Chinese, and the foreign expats'、uh, experience will be written in English. And I'm going to、uh, translate them uh, into mm. Um, uh, the opposite language. So it's going to、right. be a bilingual zine.、Mm. Awesome. Okay,、yeah. that's good. So that both, so each side can come to understand the other. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So, have you been involved at all with like translating、uh, mm-hmm. Taiwanese books into English?、Uh, I try to.、Um, how to say?、Uh, I try to.、Uh, I did throw a pro- project,、um, mm-hmm. but、uh, I didn't get it. <laughs> ah, okay. ah, speaking okay. of which,、uh, there's this. Uh, uh, there's this program in、uh, Taiwan called、uh, Books from Taiwan. Uh, mm-hmm. There's also a comic translation, and so like uh, uh,、mm-hmm. there there there's a lot of、uh, excerpts of、uh, Taiwanese comics that are already translated into English on the website.、Uh, so if、uh, any of you are interested, you can check it out. It's all for free. Okay.、Mm-hmm. I will、mm-hmm. put that in the show notes. That's、uh, I'll put a link to in the show notes. That's an excellent、uh, resource. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For people、wow. to check out. No, I ask because right now、um, mm-hmm. we did an interview,、uh, which、mm-hmm. will actually be going up later this week. In fact, with uh, uh, an American living in China, and、yeah. uh, he uh, right now there's a huge、uh, mm. boom going on right now of 
books being of uh, fantasy novels and ah, uh, yeah. online novels being translated from from Chinese to English. Mm, mm. And uh, some of the translators are actually making a lot of money doing this right now. Are they? Are uh, they? Yeah. Oh. If you uh, find if you find a title that uh, people really appreciate, and mm. the most interesting thing is that most of the money is coming from uh, donations. Oh, really? Because yeah, because people will actually donate because they want because the, what they do is they say if you want the chap ne- new translated chapters to come faster, you mm. give donations, mm. and uh, so they can make a lot of money from donations and advertising on some sites. They, ah, they, so they make a so like these uh, novels, uh, mm-hmm. do they have copyright? Yes. Um, <laughs> do are are all the translations legal? No. Mm. <laughs> uh, so, so, so uh, a lot of them are not legal. A lot of them are quote unquote mm. fan translations. Um, mm. So they're usually done quick and dirty, but mm-hmm. they they're mm-hmm. still making money from um, the translations mm-hmm. and from the uh, from the donations and from mm. advertising. And uh, so that's become quite a popular thing. Um, uh, so like yeah. oh, these uh, novels are uh, copyrighted. So like they were they're actually published outside or. Or are they just, uh, I don't know, um, novels that people write on the web? They're mostly novels that are people are writing on websites in China, is what they are. And, and like, then, uh, how, how, like uh, do they buy these? Do I have to buy these novels or are they already there for free? They're already there for free. Oh, uh, so I guess it doesn't matter then. Well, sort of. I mean, so, uh, oh. some of them, I think... You can read the first hundred chapters for free, and then uh-huh. in Chinese, you can read the first uh-huh. hundred chapters for free, and then you have to pay for it after that. Mm. Um, but and then what people are doing is anyway, they're there's also pirated versions around, so they're taking mm-hmm. them and they're they're translating them to English. So but anyway, but there's actually a huge boom going on right now of uh, translated hmm. Chinese uh, liter- literature. We'll go with that. Uh, okay. Translated Chinese yeah. literature, yeah, um, is oh. exploding right now. Um, I'll, huh. I'll send you a link so uh, you can see what I'm maybe, talking Maybe maybe I can get in on that. <laughs> mm. um, well, I just think you've got this, you've definitely got great skills as a translator based on the writing I've seen you do, and so mm-hmm. I was thinking, oh, that might be something you'd find interesting. Hey. I'm sure there's also probably some <laughs> mm-hmm. Taiwanese uh, writers, online writers, who are mm-hmm. probably might benefit from a translator as well. Mm. Mm. Okay, I will so, definitely so. look into that. Okay. Um, anyway, I think that's probably a good place for us to end it today. Um, mm-hmm. So thank you very much, Julia, for coming mm-hmm. on the show and yeah. uh, letting our audience know about Taiwanese comic books mm-hmm. and the whole and their history and the whole industry and where it's going. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, Taiwanese comics will continue to grow and expand and become a better uh, represented form in Asia. Hopefully, mm-hmm. hopefully. <laughs> Any final thoughts, Don? No, I was just mostly listening because this. This is something I know very, very little about. So this interview is great because you gave a lot of good places to start and a lot of the good background that'll that'll fill in for us folks on the other side of the world that have very, very little knowledge of, of anything going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. no thank problem. You. I'm really happy to share. Yeah, no, no, thank you for writing that article, really. Yeah. I mean, thank that's you. literally <laughs> the only thing I've ever seen in English about Taiwanese comic books. I'll, of course, I'll link to it in the show notes. Thank you. To check out, and you, I think, did uh, both Taiwan and the comic, you know, the world comic culture a real uh, favor by writing that article. Yeah. Yay! Definitely. Thank you. <laughs> I spent two months on it. <laughs> oh, and it shows. It really thank does. You. It's thank a you. great scholarly article. It really thank is. You. Thank so you. So definitely check that out, folks. Okay. Mm. On that note, thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, tune in next time for another awesome show, and good night. <laughs> good night. Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like to hear more or join the conversation, come visit us at ObeyTheDNA.com. You can also find us on iTunes or whatever fine podcast site forgot to lock their back door. So until next time, remember that to master the nerdly arts takes time, practice, and enough Coca-Cola to drop a rhino. See ya!
Come on over and join the conversation at ObeyTheDNA.com, where you will find show notes and more.